The Mac and Pete Project. So, I, I think a few episodes ago, you predicted a uh, train wreck with uh, Alex Kurtzman as the conductor. Something like that. I didn't mm. expect it to be this catastrophic. Lack of a better yeah. term. Uh, I forgot to mention this last week, but we had two episodes in a row as of last week that dealt with childhood trauma. Yes. One one being Picard's therapy session. And then immediately the next week was the FBI agent's therapy session. He wasn't a monster. He was a, a Vulcan. He wasn't trying to kill you. He was trying to mind meld. Standalone episodes that you wanted. Not the kind that I think you wanted, but you got your standalone. <laughs> so... I'm thinking back to the days of Next Generation. That would have been like getting two Jordy episodes in a row, you know? Yeah. Poor Jordy. I would have. I would have loved a Jordy episode right about now. <laughs> um. So let's. Do you have anything positive to say about this episode? Um. Just what I've been saying the whole entire time. It's this is the best that Star Trek has looked. Like it is shot very well, and I just feel so bad for everyone involved in the production that are just falling victims to the horrible writers. Okay, I can at least say there's one thing that I think that they handled in a new way, and I liked which was how they exited the Borg Queen or Agnes as the new Borg Queen. I liked that they finally gave one of the biggest villains in Star Trek some, some layers, some contacts. Besides, that was probably out of any... If you, if you held me down and say pick something to like, I did genuinely like the way that they went. Whoever you are now, half of you is our friend. Maybe in time, all of you could be. In time, perhaps. Just me taking a step back and being more collected. Um, yes, Agnes and the Borg Queen is probably the best part of this season now. I know before I probably would have said Rios is my favorite character because he was most consistent, but it's just... He's, there's no story there. Yeah, it was. It seemed to be that Rios was almost used as a plot device to get in Easter eggs of old Star Treks. Are you from outer space? No, I'm from Chile. I just I work in outer space. You're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. That was a lot of his why he was there. They gave him a lot of lines. They put him in there. They get, did the check off thing with him. Um, so very quickly, this episode is about them trying to get back to the ship, which Picard does refer to by name once in the episode. And then the rest of the time, it's the ship. You know, um, correct. And basically they want to stop the Borg Queen because she wants to start a new collective in the 21st century. And we see that Adam Sung has teamed up with her and it's basically a race to get control of the ship. Uh, basically, it's a stalemate with Adam Sung in the mansion or the chateau. And then Seven is injured by the Queen and basically the queen ends up saving seven in exchange for the ship and then she just takes the ship she they give her the ship to go do their thing it is basically and what happens in this episode so there's a few things that we need to point out so last week we discussed the inconsistencies of picard's mother her age or everything they allude that the trauma 
of that event hurt Picard to the degree that he pretended his mother got older. Yeah. I mean, so my, I mean, they they addressed exactly what you brought up the last time. It's almost to, like they watched our episode and <laughs> wrote around it. Yeah, I, I, they I, said, yeah, they watched the episode and went, well, we want to do something different. How do we explain that? Uh, yeah. Childhood trauma, he, he blocked it out. Um, so it's impressive what, that they actually hired an intern to go look and see how many times did Picard's mom come up in the show. Right. Now, and then it got down to the thing, oh, I used to imagine her drinking tea as an old woman. So here's the other thing. Not only that, that he did he imagine his father being bald, or did at that point did he start go- getting older? Does I don't it really know. Matter at this point. It really matter at this point. Um, Robert's not ever there, so we've never seen Robert as a yeah. maybe, you know. So uh, yeah, where's Robert the whole entire time? And uh, so I don't understand that part. But um, the, the next stupid thing is. Agnes creates a hologram of Elnor to help defend the ship. Turns out this ship can make a hologram from anyone who's ever been on board, including an emergency combat hologram. How may I be of service? Hiya, Elnor. Let's play keep away. With pleasure. Which was fine until we find out that Elnor has all the memory. The hologram has all the memories of Elnor and current state of mind as Elnor was dying. Elnor? <laughs> I'm not Elnor. Look, I, I know you're not really him. I know that. Rafi, I share the recollection of Elnor's final breath. Enough to know that his last thoughts of you were not of blame, but of love. So, if, because Agnes... Was part Borg? Was that possible? Maybe I'm reaching, of course, because I'm trying to explain this away. But two, I have never seen. If you're a combat hologram, okay, you you're designed for combat. Why are you taking hits as if it's painful? Uh, uh, that's something I'm not understanding. Yeah, you're hitting you're hitting a force field. So I I get, but he should not have reacted. In a way of pain. Okay, that's one. Two. Um, uh, seven. Maybe has been redeemed a little bit in this episode, but not because her character went through an evolution, but more she was a plot device. And yeah. um, and that that that. That just reminded me of like some of the stupid dialogue, more stupid dialogue from Raffi. Just randomly in the episode, she's like, you sound like a captain. You would make a really good captain. Why didn't you join Starfleet? Listen to you. You sound like a captain. You know, you should have joined Starfleet. Yeah, and then they threw the teaser of Janeway in there. I tried. After Voyager. Starfleet shut me down because you were Bork. Janeway went to bat for me, threatened to resign. This is Alex Kurtzman's Starfleet, so it was incredibly racist because right. they don't let former Borg in. Do, do you know of any former Borg that are in Starfleet? Um, a, an admiral, maybe? Uh, a retired uh, fella? Maybe once the captain, captain of, of a flagship? You know? Flagship? Uh, nobody important, though. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, we got to show that there's still racism in the future, that humans still are racist in the future, and we That's haven't learned anything. It bothers the hell out of me because you're ignoring the entire eugenics wars, World War Three. You're you're ignoring all the building blocks of why humanity is better in the 23rd, 24th, and 25th century. Yeah, they've gotten rid bigotry they've gotten rid of famine they've gotten rid of all the things that makes us fight class anything that you can think of and then, um and i i guess basically just to go back to like the whole picard thing in the chateau it's basically finishing the story that should have been finished two episodes ago 
where it's like, okay, yes, I guess that she committed suicide. I think you de- guessed depression. Yeah, we guessed it. And it's like, yeah, there was practically both the same thing, you know. I remember now, in a cloudy moment of extreme melancholy, my mother hung herself here in this place. It was both of them put together. and uh, I don't know why they couldn't have said that back then. You know, I'm not. I'm not yeah. understanding why it was such a pull. Why it was such a. I'm, the only thing I can think of is that's what Q was trying to teach him. Uh, we still I, have yet, the I've, whole reason for this, and we haven't seen Q. I've given up on trying to come up with in-universe explanations to the madness. I'm just doing production-wise. They needed that scene to wait until this episode. So we could have more flashbacks of Picard on the battlefield and having memories of my mommy and I used to play hide and seek. We should do that right now. How about hide and seek? Hide and seek indeed. You'll have to find us first. So, I mean, seriously, him, I'm who, gonna have he, the, this the, episode. The great tactician, great Starfleet officer, had to think of a childhood memory of playing hide and go seek to say we should go hide in the the basement of the chateau. Yeah, yeah. It was, and it's like, and you know, the writers are just patting themselves on the back for. Uh, writing and stitching together is this elaborate storytelling of this in-depth character study of Jean-Luc Picard. And it's just, it's, uh, I'm just, it's stupid. It's, it is, it is, it is. So I, I have to get a little personal here. I love Star Trek. It is one of the, the passions, one of the, the pleasures in my life. I struggle Every time I watch this to get any shred of enjoyment, I and I've said this before, I'm getting to the point where I'm literally watching it to review it. And I'm yeah. I'm I'm honestly getting tired of doing that. I'm just like before when the, there was something interesting at least going on, I, I will give it credit. This episode to me, because of the Borg moment, um was probably better than last week's, but it was like one was a smaller, less stinky dog turd instead of one being a bigger dog. Yeah, I mean, it's like comparing two bad things. I know. And I, I'm getting to the point where it's like, I think season one might be better. At because least this- season one had an overarching eye. And it seems, this is what it seems like to me. It seems like they know in season three, they want the original, they want the TNG cast back. So Minus they're trying to kill off. Yeah, besides Will Wheaton. Because they, they need someone to shill the show, you know. That's, that's correct. <laughs> it seems to me that they're killing off all of the characters. Or they're giving them an exit. Like, is Rios going to stay in the past? Do we really care? Do we really care? I mean, who do we have left? We've got Ralphie. And we, if, if he leaves, we have Ralphie and Seven. And then they're going to bring Elnor back, and they'll have to do something with him. I think he's going to stay dead. I don't think they will. You don't think so? He's going to. No. He, the, the parting gift was he's now half Borg. Be, because the Jurati from Episode One, Jurati Borg Queen, she's invading the Stargazer Bridge to make everything right again with her new Borg collective that does nothing but good. It could be. I don't know. But uh, I, I'm going to have a lot of fun because I really want to do a video essay on this season and uh, try to clip it all together in one hour. Yeah. And um, because it's like we I, I'm pretty sure we're going to it's going to be the same thing with season one. Everyone's uh, goals and uh, reasonings for doing everything will not line up at all. Because season Probably one, not. season one, we have uh, what's his name from uh, the Daystrom Institute, Maddox. 
Maddox, supposedly Bruce sends Maddox. out two androids, one to the Borg reclamation site and one to Starfleet Academy to learn about the android ban or the synth ban. And it just, the once you start thinking about things, it just falls apart in the nonsense. And it's like, that's the same thing that's going to happen here with like Q getting involved. Why, why do we have so many bad guys? Why do we have Q? I know I'm just going up tangent off tangent, but we got Well, that's Q. the problem. The problem with this is there's no consistent story. It's like there's 85 different threads, but they're all sewing eight different shirts. There's like, it doesn't, it, nothing makes something of value. Yeah. Because we, we, we got Q, Adam Sung, and uh, the Borg Queen. And it's like... Right. Who, and now the Borg Queen's good. Okay. So is Adam Sung now the primary bad guy? Why is he a bad guy? Why did she say that there has to be two Rene Picards? One must live, one must die. Why did they, why did they go out of their way to say, in this time, in this, time, in this reality... In several different realities. Are we in a different reality in the Star Trek canon? I sure as hell hope so. But anyway. Right. And it's just like, I'm trying to think, how are they going to tie everything up to make Q make sense? Because in the second episode, Q's like, this is a penance. This is a future you created yourselves. And you're asking me what, you know, it's, uh, it's just... <laughs> I, I am going to be so impressed if they can actually tie it up in such a way that it does make a little bit of sense. It's still going to be horrible, but yeah. I they're going to be able to do it. I think it's going to be just as bad as the first season where nothing lines up again. So I will give them credit for the first part of the season. I was hopeful. But what about what was it about season, episode four was when we we took we started the. Uh, the bad dialogue. We started doing four or five different B stories oh, that had nothing I mean, to do with. It was episode three. As as, as soon three. as they got in L.A., it fell apart for me. It fell apart. Yeah. So, in closing, I'm not impressed. But why don't we take a moment, Pete? To talk about something that we both saw today that made us feel tingly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's end talk. We got uh we got the opening credits for uh, Strange New Worlds. Space. The final frontier. Really interesting. Voiceover by Pike. So this is gonna be the first star trek since what voyager that we're gonna have a voiceover in the intro uh no if i remember correctly voyager and ds9 did not have voiceovers oh only i'm sorry yeah we're going only back to next gen next gen and the original series were the uh, only yeah well besides star trek enterprise uss enterprise the only ships to to have that was the starship enterprise so, we can honestly say, I love the graphics, I love the visuals, I love the cinematography, I love the, the lighting, everything hit, everything, the tone, the... I got a lot of, over my whole body well, watching it. Yes, and, and that hasn't happened in a long time with Star Trek. Um, to say that I'm excited goes beyond words right now. Uh, what I did notice is he said five year mission of the USS Enterprise. So, is this going to be a separate five year mission from Kirk's? Or do you think they're going to say, Oh, Pike did the first two years and then Kirk Cook took over? No, I'm going to. So, this is what we know from Canon. From Canon, Robert April designed the Constitution class and was the first captain of the, of the Starship Enterprise. Mm -hmm. for a five-year mission okay. i believe in the beginning their idea was to have five-year long-term space exploration missions 
Yeah. And it was to be a big loop to come back to Earth. So I'm thinking that because if we look in in story, I uh, uh, search for Spock when they came back to Dry Dock. The seven years old or something, yeah. Jim, the Enterprise is twenty years old. The 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 Enterprise is thirty years old. It's twenty years old. So if we take that into context, and we know that. It's been two years since he logged a star, was what uh, Decker said in the motion picture. So there's two, and then we only saw three years worth of Kirk's mission. So there's three plus two, that's five. But we also know the animated series happened. So if we assume that Kirk was in the chair for ten years, let's say that five and five, I'm going to go with he just had a five-year mission. You want to go with five? So it was three. Someone else took command afterwards before the retrofit. Okay. So then if, if but that's, we... Well, that's me, just, you know. Okay. So either, hypothetically, we could say Pike was in command for two two-year missions, or April was in command for a five, Pike for a five, and Kirk for five, or... Kirk for 10. It's 20 years old. So yeah. we do know that the five-year mission was a standard for Starfleet captains at that point. So we do know they're introducing Kirk in the second season of the show. Correct. Or at least he's been cast. So my thought was, are they going to jump ahead in time and finish the five-year mission from the original series? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I because they so. could go so many different directions with this. And and the other thing is I, I we've seen a few interviews or I I've read that it's not gonna be a Kirk O you know, Pike is going to be involved throughout the entire run, from what I understand. Okay. What they could do is maybe a lieutenant Kirk um came in to substitute kind of like we've saw uh in Chain of Command where they need a substitute captain type of thing. Maybe we see something like that. Uh, maybe Spock goes, hey, there's this guy I graduated with. He's a good friend of mine. Chris, you got to get him on board. You know, that type of, you know, I'm not sure. Um, every, uh, to me, Captain Kirk is William Shatner. He will always be. Um, so Pike's a little bit, uh, Jeffrey Hunter did, you know, the one and then the flashbacks and menagerie. So that I, I can excuse, but I'm, I'm always going to be Bill Shatner is, is Captain Kirk. Now that doesn't mean we can't tell a story around Kirk. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I'm okay with that. I do like the, the design of the enterprise. I do like the, the, how the windows were very much. I also like that a lot of the, the, the cinematography, the scapes, the back was very remember the old novels that they used to have where they had the enterprise shooting off and you had the the planetoids yeah that was very reminiscent of the 60s and 70s novels that came along and and i was just really enthused by it so P picard's coming to an end which is good because i can't stand it anymore um but I'm I'm really excited because we have Obi Wan coming out, and then we have, of course, Strange New Worlds. And I think Pete, you and I are going to have a lot of fun doing those too. Yeah. So. I'm trying to see how many episodes of Strange looks like. There's going to be ten as well. Okay. So let this up for the best. I mean, that's what I've been trying to do every week for Picard, but it's just like. Yeah, they and I think what happened was why I'm so bitter is because I was tricked. I mean, we 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 thought it was they they listened and they they changed them. I I'm gonna have a lot of trouble going to season three. I'm gonna have a lot of trouble in Picard season three. You know, and we've heard other news about uh, Michelle Yeoh is gonna come back and do. I guess they're doing a movie instead of a series of Section 31, which is great because Michelle Yeoh really shines on the big screen. She just came out with 
that I don't know if you've seen it yet, Pete. There's a science fiction one out there called Everything Everywhere All at Once. Mm-hmm. It's a multi-universe type jump. Very entertaining. Wonderful. It's a mixed bag of a little bit of everything. But okay. uh, I, I think we're going to... There's going to be a lot of stuff to be excited for. And Picard's just, an, unfortunately, I would say a bump in the road. It's been like a massive P- PA pothole in the road. So. so. All right. We'll see you next week for however they're going to wrap this up. Trainwreck Part 2. See ya. See ya.